Hey guys, now we will do some previous gate questions from the, the topics that we have discussed so far. Okay, now let me read out the first question that is a 400 volt 50 hertz 330 HP. Okay, three phase induction motor is drawing 50 amps of current at pointed power factor. He says that the stator and rotor copper losses are this much and this much. The friction losses is this much, friction and windage loss, and these are the core losses. He is asking you to find out what is the area power. Area power means this PG. We want this PG value. And I can find out first what is the input power to this machine. Input power we can find out by using this relation that input power is equal to root 3 VLIL cos y. Root 3 into line voltage is 400, 50 is the drawn current. 8.8 power factor you will get 27.712 kilowatt as the input power from the input power okay as we already seen the power flow how it happens in the uh, induction machine after stator copper losses then you have remaining is rotor input power or i can say air gap power after pg you will have rotor copper losses pcu rotor and then you will have mechanical power developed and from this some rotational losses and then you will have the output power like this isn't it now you are asked to find out pg so pn minus stator loss so pn minus stator loss stator loss is already given as 1.5 kilowatt over here you will get 26.212 kilowatt that is option d is the right answer for this question let's move on to the next question a three phase skrill gauge induction motor is supplied from a balanced three phase source drives a mechanical load the load speed the torque speed characteristic of the motor uh, is given the motor's uh, torque speed is solid and the load uh, load characteristic is in dotted curve it is given two operating points a and b which of the following will describe the stability simply you have to find out which one is the stable point stable operating point so without actually having to think much you can uh, say which is the stable point that is b okay a is unstable and B is stable. Look at this another good question. A 400 volts, 50 hertz, 4 pole, 1400 rpm star connected squirrel cage motor having these parameter values. He is telling you to neglect the stator resistance that is R1 you have to neglect and core and rotation losses of the motor he is telling you to neglect. Okay. The motor is controlled from a three phase voltage source inverter with constant V by F control method. Okay. Now, state are line to line voltage and RMS, uh, RMS value and frequency to obtain maximum torque at the time of starting is to be. So, one thing you have to keep in mind that is V by F is constant. That is, initially, what is the voltage and frequency? Initial voltage was 400 and frequency was 50. That is equal to 8. So, in the second case also, v2 by f2 will be equal to must and should equal to e8 okay so as per given uh, parameters or given data i can draw the equivalent circuit in this way isn't it he said to neglect the stator uh, resistance and he said to neglect the core losses also that means you can remove the magnetizing branch component and you can just uh, remove r1 also just put excess that is the stator reactance, XR is the rotor reactance, RR is the rotor resistance by S. This is generally the equivalent circuit, approximate equivalent circuit. So, in order to get to maximum torque, the general condition according to this circuit diagram, SMT, will be like this as per this condition. So, SMT will be equal to RR by XS plus XR. Okay. So, just keep this in mind now according to given circuit. Now, let us observe this question. So in this uh, data, you have this excess value as 1.5 ohms. Similarly, XR value also 1.5. Both reactances are 1.5 ohms only. The formula for this XS is 2 pi F1 into LS and XR will be 2 pi F1 into LR. F1 initial frequency is nothing but 50 hertz, isn't it? Initially, the original frequency is. So I can find out what is the value of inductances of both stator and the rotor so from this i can solve it so 1.5 by 2 pi into 50 so this is equal for both ls and lr okay now he is telling that you want to obtain maximum torque at the time of starting so at the time of starting what is the slip will be equal to 1 so smt will be equal to 1 so what smt equal to 1 means smt equal to 1 means 
xs plus xr xs plus xr will be equal to rr what is rr 1 ohm so xs plus xr is equal to 1 ohm okay xs plus xr so i will just write down what is the xs plus xr in the second case x2 plus xr xs2 xr2 why is it like that because he is telling that you are being controlled by v by f control that means your voltage and both frequency are being varied how they are varied so that this ratio will be constant in any case v1 f1 and v2 by f2 ratio will be constant but these values will be different okay the value will be different so if f value changes automatically the reactance value should change with respect to v by f ratio only it depends on f only it does not depend upon v by f ratio so x value also changes so corresponding to the new f2 these are the values of x so from this i can take 2 pi f2 as constant and the inductance of both are the same that is 3 by 2 pi into 50 is equal to 1 from this i can find out what is the f2 value isn't it 16.7 i will get so give given that v by f ratio is constant so from this v by f ratio constant condition i can derive what is the v2 condition v2 value also so 400 by 50 that is 8 into 16.7 will give you the v2 that is 133.3 volts option b is the right answer now look at this question a three phase squirrel gauge induction motor has a starting torque of 150 percent and maximum torque of 300 percent with respect to the rated torque so tst is equal to 1.5 times the rated t max is equal to three times the rated as per the question and uh, at rated voltage and rated frequency neglect the state or resistance and rotational losses value of slip at the time of maximum torque is slip for maximum torque is so you have tst and t max we have already seen the relation between tst and t max that is tst by t max is equal to 2a by a square plus 1 where a is nothing but smt isn't it that simply i am writing with a just for simplicity sake so two times of a so a value is uh, so two times of a so by a square plus 1 so s uh, tst by t max so here is a tst and t max okay tst is 1.5 times and t max is 3 times of rated 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 get cancel here so again you can cancel 1.5 by 3 1 by 2 so from this i will cross multiply and then you get this equation solving a in this equation you will get 26.79 as the slip for maximum torque okay now next let's get to the next question in this question speed of induction motor is controlled by varying frequency while maintaining the ratio of supply voltage to frequency that is v by f ratio constant again over here rated frequency is 50 hertz so rated voltage is 40 so the speed initially was 1440 rpm find the speed at 30 hertz rpm and the load torque is constant is so let's evaluate what is the synchronous speed initially initially synchronous speed is 120 into 50 by p 4 1500 rpm and initially nr is given as rotor speed is given as 1440 rpm so what could be the slip so difference that is 60 by ns is equal to the slip initial slip that is 0 0.04 he says that v by f ratio is constant what is that v by f ratio is equal to initial voltage is 400 frequency 50 that equals to a 8 okay and he says that the frequency is now second frequency is 30 hertz so if second frequency is 30 hertz the synchronous speed will also change that will be equal to 120 into 30 by 4 that is 900 rpm so the second synchronous speed after v by f control is 900 rpm now i have to find out what is the rotor speed corresponding to this ns2 so nr2 will be equal to ns2 1 minus s2 i just have to find out what is the slip in the second condition so now you look at the value of slip now where is the slip 0 0.04 now tell me is it, is it high slip region or low slip region it definitely belongs to low slip region isn't it low slip region means is it uh, what will be the relationship between uh, torque and slip torque is directly proportional to s in low slip region isn't it low slip region is a stable region i hope you remember so for this uh, low slip region or stable region I can write down the torque is directly proportional to S into E square by R that we have already seen, isn't it? So E square, just remember for low slip region, this is the condition. 
E is proportional to the flux, main flux in the machine. And main flux in the machine is proportional to V by F ratio. So I can write down T is proportional to S into V square F square, V square by F square into 1 by R. So R is not varied here. So R is constant. I can take it off. So, and he says that the load torque is constant. So if the load torque or torque is constant, I will just write down S1 V1 square Vf F1 square is equal to S2 V2 square into F2 square. So I know I have to find out S2. I know S1, I know V1, I know F1, okay, I know V2, I know F2 also. How do I know it? Because I already know that F2 is equal to 30 hertz and V by F ratio is 8. So V2 will be V by F ratio into F2. It is 240 volts automatically. So after putting all the values and solving this, I will get a slip value 0 0.006, 0, 0, 0 0.066. So NR2 as we required, NS2 into 1 minus S2. So 900 minus 1 minus 0 0.066, that will be equal to 840 RPM. So if NR2 is 840 RPM, now tell me what is the difference speed? NS minus NR, what is the slip speed I can say? Slip speed is 60 RPM, isn't it? In the second case, this is the slip speed in the second case. What was the slip speed in the first case? In the first case also NS minus NR was equal to 60 RPM. Okay. Now very, very important observation I can uh, make out here. That is, okay, please keep in mind. If V by F ratio is constant, okay, if V by F ratio is constant, and torque is constant, T1 is equal to T2 is equal to constant. Then what happens means slip speed remains the same. For any F. Understood? If V by F ratio is constant and torque is constant, then slip speed remains same for any value of F. So if I if I am well aware about this condition from the beginning itself, I need not take this much time to solve this particular question. What I will do just simply, I, I know what is the F2. So I know NS2, what is NS2? 120 into 30 by 4, that is equal to 900 RPM. I already find, I will find out by given data only. As I know the slip speed is, Okay, the slip speed is how much? 60. So 900 minus 60 will give you directly 840 RPM, isn't it? So without actually having solve, having to solve all these things, I would have directly got the option C, 840 RPM as the answer. Okay, please keep these things in mind. So if an induction motor is operating at slip S, ratio of gross power output to air gap power, Gross power output is nothing but the mechanical power developed in simple language divided by gross power. So Pm is 1 minus S into Pg by Pg. It cancel 1 minus S. So option B is the right answer. 400 volt, 15 kilowatt, 4 pole, 50 hertz Y character induction motor has a full load slip of 4%. Output torque of the machine at full load is. So output power is given as 15 kilowatt, 15 into 10 power 3 watts, isn't it? And uh, I can write this P out equal to 2 pi into NR into TSH by 60. We have already seen this is the formula for output torque in terms of mechanical terms. So here there is no mention about rotational loss. I can assume that the gross per torque or the total torque developed is equal to the shaft torque. So from this I can find out what is the value of TSH. And... Uh, NR I have to find out. So NS as per given uh, poles and frequency is 1500 RPM. Slip is also given as 4%. So NR will be 1440 RPM. So torque will be equal to substitute all the values. Then I will get 99.47 Newton meter as the torque. We will see another question. A 220 volt 3 phase 4 pole 50 hertz induction motor wound rotor is supplied with normal voltage and frequency stator resistance and magnetizing reactance. Core loss all are negligible. He says that T max to maximum torque is 225 times of the full load torque. That is T max is equal to 2.25 times of the rated or full load torque. Okay. And he says that it occurs, this condition occurs at okay, that maximum torque occurs at 15% slip. 
it is slip at maximum torque is equal to 0 0.15 actual rotor resistance is 0 0.03 ohms per phase rotor resistance value is given the value of external resistance to be inserted in the rotor to get maximum torque at the time of starting okay first we will see what happens when uh, maximum torque occurs then smt is equal to r2 by x2 this is the condition as we know so from this condition i can extract what is the value of x2 is equal to because i already know what is smt that is 15 percent i know r2 only unknown is x2 so i will get actually what is the value of x2 x2 value is 2 amperes now he says that we need this maximum torque at the time of starting so at the time of starting slip will be equal to 1 that is only equal to smt as given here and he says that some external resistance is included in the rotor that means the rotor resistance will be modified as r2 plus re external okay divided by x2 so is equal to 1 because at the time of starting this so 0 0.03 plus re is equal to 2 re will be 0. Point, sorry 1.97 ohms as the external resistance to be inserted at the time of starting to get maximum torque at the time of starting so that means i can tell by adding resistance in the rotor at the time of starting you can increase the tst starting torque okay now let's look at the last question of this video that is he in this question has given the value of rotor resistance as 0 0.1 ohm and he has given the reactance as 0 0.92 ohms okay and uh, neglect the voltage drop in the stator and assume the rotor resistance is constant full load slip is 3% okay full load slip is 3% ratio of maximum torque to full load torque is required okay so ratio of maximum torque to full load torque so maximum torque to full load torque is nothing but as we have already seen a square plus sfl square by a sfl this relations already we have seen so this a is nothing but the maximum slip at maximum torque that is equal to r2 by x2 r2 value is known x2 value is known so this is the value of slip at full maximum torque so substitute all the values in the formula i will get 1.948 as the answer okay guys thanks for watching